Hello and welcome to CNC World, broadcasting from North America and around the globe. I'm Xie He in Washington. Joining me today in our studio is Mr. Bill Jones, Washington Bureau Chief for Executive Intelligence Review. Mr. Jones, welcome to our program. Happy to be here. Thank you. The 19th meeting of the Academicians of the Chinese Academy of Sciences and the 14th meeting of the Academicians of the Chinese Academy of Engineering is being held in the Chinese capital, Beijing. So when we talk about um, science and technology development, we have to talk about um, patent and intellectual property. So last year, China ranked the second in international patent applications, and it, it, is, it, it is revising its patent law and also reinforcing its IP protection. So it seems that China has been putting much effort into this. Yes, indeed. And as they move forward in this field, it becomes even more important to them in that respect because it's, it's not simply a, a matter, as, as is often complained here in the United States, of protecting foreign investment in China. It's a matter of also protecting uh, Chinese intellectual property. And uh, this is an important part of the, uh, uh, of the scientific uh, and technological co cooperation because unless you have those, uh, those certainties, it's very difficult for other countries and other individuals to come in and work together with you because they feel, oh, I'm you know, going to lose my priority in this, in this area. So that uh, the, the legislative changes in this field are extremely important. Uh, the number of patents, of course, that, that China has, uh, has put in is, is just uh, astronomical. Uh, President Xi, however, indicates that you know, the, the criteria, uh, and this I think reflects a debate among the scientists themselves, that the criteria has to be uh, different than simply the number of reports, the number of patents, the number of theses that are being put forward. You have to look at, at what is inculcating creativity, because the idea is you want to have people who think outside the box. And that's not always indicated by the number of reports that you write or the number of experiments that you take. It's, it's indicated really by the breakthroughs that you make. And China is confronting a problem that all countries are confronted with. How do you inculcate creativity in your educational system? How do you encourage people to think beyond what they immediately know? Right? How do you, how do you, how do you uh, uh, foment or, or promote that peculiar aspect of the human mind that can find something new. And I think that China is dealing with it in a very direct way, as President Xi's speech indicated. And I think uh, other countries should also take lessons of that, that, because for the future, this is what's going to be important, the number of creative thinkers that you have uh, working in your economy dealing with, uh, uh, with these problems. So last but not least, what advice would you give for China's um, promoting of this science and technology in the future? Well, I think you should look uh, in particular at the, uh, the most important areas of high energy physics. I know in, in all these areas there's always a defense aspect of it and that has to be taken into consideration. Every country does that. But to find those areas of, uh, of high tech in biotechnology, um, can res coming to a solution of, of dealing with cancer, for instance, uh, in the space program. China has already opened up their space program. I hope that the United States would also up, open up its space program to China, which they should have done years ago, but for a variety of reasons it, it hasn't occurred. Um, and I would say that if you can, you know, create uh, trust in these areas which are of most important, most importance for mankind, uh, this will filter down to try and broaden the trust that otherwise is necessary uh, in the political realm. Uh, I can take an example from uh, uh, the old days, not to make any comparison with today, but the old days of the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union, when things were really, really bad between the two. Among the scientists, there was still collaboration. And ultimately, it was that collaboration that won out and not that controversy and hostility. And I, I think that's really key for in this opening up of science and technology to, to the world scientific elites. Good for China and good for the world. Exactly. Thank you for your insights. And that is all for our special report today. Stay tuned on CNC World for more of the latest news here and around the globe. I'm Xie He in Washington. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.